video on how to adjust the end play in a roller camshaft and after a uh, retrofit. Um, there's this little button here I've done in my other videos. It's similar to this one. This is a nylon. This is a metal. The metal one's got a hole in the center and it presses against the cover. See right, right there. And that keeps the camshaft from moving too far. But the problem is the cover's got to have, there's got to be a little play, one to five thousandths, I've been told in reading. Some people try to do a little bit more. So basically you want no play, but you want play. So what we're doing is taking spot putty on the cover where the cam button touches. This is just, or not spot putty, silly putty. <laughs> Thinking about fixing the body work. Silly putty, got it from the dollar store. Putting it on here, and we're going to put the cover on. And we've got a decent thickness, not too thick. And we're going to see how much it smashes it down against. And then there is a cam retaining plate on here that you have to have, or you're supposed to have, to hold the button so it doesn't fall out. There are $3 at the local stores, $6 online delivered. We've had to adjust this a little bit carefully so we can get it to just have just a little bit of play. And then to check the play, actually once it's, the camshaft has a lot of play, if I put the cover on, if I push the back of the distributor gear, you would see the camshaft move forward. Let's see if I can grab it. No, I can't grab it right now. I got my hands free, but you would see the cam move. The cam would move. Let's see if I can actually do it. Try to grab it this back carefully. See the camshaft move? That's what we want to have a little play, but obviously that's way too much. And I don't like grabbing behind the cam lobes. I'm using a screwdriver that's got tons of tape on it so it doesn't scratch anything. And carefully get them distributor gear. I don't want to grab the outside of the teeth and break one off. And then you don't want any lifters in here while you're doing that because the lifters will stop to play because the lifters will do that. This controls the movement of the camshaft. Normally a roller engine We'll have a cam retainer button that holds the camshaft in. We don't have that provisions on our block. That's why over here I'm pointing, there's no holes in the block. There would be three holes in the valley pan here to hold this piece of the retaining assembly that holds the dog bones, that holds the lifters in. And also some people um, like retrofit lifters because they're supposed to be better for racing than factory lifters. And roller cams are more advantage. So let me pause this while I put all the bolts on and we'll see how our gap is. And we got the camshaft pushed all the way back so this is going to push against the cam. So we're putting on the cam button, the cover button, and the camshaft cover, timing cover on. Torquing these just to hand tight. Six foot pounds. Is what my manual says here. So you basically just tighten them by hand with one hand because you don't want to bend the cover. I'll let it sit for a minute and see what happens. Actually, put one more bolt in, and this will tell us this is going to push against the button. Now we'll be able to see our plays in the camshafts all the way back. And the way you can move the camshaft forward if you got too much play is you tap the freeze plug in back, the cam freeze plug, which is right where the camshaft is, forward. If you need to get more play, you just tap the camshaft a little bit to pull the freeze plug back. And that freeze plug is all the way back. So we have no extra room to make the play. We had a smaller bushing on here, cam button, but it was, had too much play in there. And you can get them in nylon or metal. They're, they're both about the same price, about six bucks. There's the carbon fiber one. Um, and big block, small block, they're the same. This is whatever brand I got for big block. And then the cam button, I don't have the part number offhand for that. Oh, here it 
this cam button. You can pause the video if you need to see that. Just a little locking plate that holds locks the button, holds the buttons in, and has tabs that you bend against the bolts so the bolts don't get locked, don't fall out. Let me, well, in case we can keep going. Let me pause it while I do this. And then we get the cover off, and you don't want to bend the cover. So I've heard of people bending the cover to just play. That's going to slip the cover and you bolt up correctly. I wouldn't do that. Here's the cover. And if you see, this is how the cam button shaped. So we actually are doing good. We got just a little play. Barely a thousandths. As you can see right here in the inner, in the inner the recess part, there's barely any silly putty there. So we peel the silly putty off. How thick is it? Yeah, it's not really even measurable. You can see skinning. That's about it. And we got the cam all the way back, right? Yep, won't go back anymore. So we're going to, have to shim it a little bit more. Or try to try the other, try to put the other button in and see what happens. But this is how you check. This is was the center is a hole in the center, so it doesn't matter. We're checking the gap between the hole. So it gives you the basics how to adjust a cam button. Don't bend the cover. No, no. You can get, you can get buttons smaller, bigger, big block, small block, Chevy are all the same. So hopefully take some uh, guesswork out of how to do it. Is scared about moving the camshaft forward, moving it back, using a dial indicator.